I just want to share something for a second. Ooh, I got a lot of light coming in the window. Um, I was reading in the book of Esther, and there is so much in here. She had no idea what all she would be called to do. Just like you have no idea what all you'll be called to do. Just like I have no idea what all I will be called to do. What our purpose is on this planet is so far beyond our grasp. It's just mind-blowing what God will actually do with us if we say yes, if we allow him, if we are obedient, if we are brave, and if we go boldly before the throne and ask. And if we just say, here I am, Lord. Use me. What do you want me to do? Um, there's so much that was in here and there's just deceit all through this. And there's jealousy all through this. And there's contempt for each other all through this. And there's evil scheming all through this. You know, I strongly suggest that you read the book of Esther because there's so much and there's so much and there's, there's fear and there's, you know, she's like, all this is happening and the king didn't even know who her people were, you know, and it didn't come up and she didn't need to say it. She never lied, but he didn't know she was a Jew. And then, um, Haman comes forth with all this and he's mad because Mordecai won't bow to him. He gets a promotion and he's mad because when he walks by Mordecai, everybody else, all the other Kingsmen, they'll bow to him and they reverence him. Mordecai doesn't. Mordecai is not going to bow to somebody that's not his God. And it makes him angry. And he he's plotting against him and all this. And I love how the twist of it, the king asks Haman all these things. You know, well, if someone, because he the night before he comes in to have a banquet, when he doesn't even know what the banquet is, um, Esther asks for this banquet with Haman. And she's worked up the nerve. And she's not doing it by herself. She's doing it. She's praying. She's fasting. She's asked her maidens to be fasting. Um, she, she reaches out for help. We need help. We need each other praying. We need each other fasting on our behalf when we're going to tackle something. Um, when we're fighting in the spiritual realm, we need backup warriors. And honey, that's all the time. It's all the time. It's not just a once in a while thing. If you're walking in your calling at all, it's going to be an all the time ongoing spiritual battle. So she goes in there and um, she's just like, okay, here's what we're going to do. So I will go into the king and it's not according to the law. This is not my time to be going in there. He did not request my presence. Here's the boldness. Here's where you act through your fear. And if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to do what I need to do. And I'm going to try to save my people. And I'm going to try to have an audience with the king. And he immediately finds favor with her and grants her the presence to be there. And answers in the way that she needed. And it turned on Haman. And um, he gets impaled on his own little trick that he was planning for Mordecai. Um, out of his anger, out of his jealous, jealousy, out of um, his insecurity, let's be point blank. But I love the phrase, you know, who knows if this is what you were here for? What if you are called here? What if this is your purpose for such a time as this? How do you just do nothing? You know, and Mordecai, those are my own words, but Mordecai has said this to her and she's like, oh, yeah. So she does what she has to do and everything goes in her favor. Her people are spared. Um, and I just heard the other day someone say there was a Holocaust, a genocide already in the Bible previously against the Jews. Yeah. In Esther. Read this book. It's, it's got everything you'll want in a good story. Read this book. The book of Esther. 